tune up regularly. Tune up regularly. Isn't it interesting that the Scripture really, man, you can dig down and there can be all these fine points of, of doctrine and things that we learn, or you can summarize the whole thing as Jesus did in love God, love people. <laughs> it can kind of get to be that, you know, that's the big picture. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You need those two relationships to be strong. That's why I love our, our vision, which is changing relationships. But you need to tune up those relationships regularly. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Jesus says, If you continue, I'm just, I, I, for whatever reason, I was just in a circling words mode when I wrote this message. I got continue circled. That is powerful. He didn't just say if you kind of read it once, if you hang out, if you, if you do church occasionally, that kind of thing. He said, if you continue in my word, the word is God's perspective on life. If you continue in that and you fill your mind with that, then you are truly a disciple of mine, a learner, someone who's becoming like me. And then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. This is one of those verses that gets ripped out of context and misused in our culture all the time. You'll hear people all the time say, the truth will set you free. And I'm not saying that that's not true on a certain level, but that's not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, it matters what truth you're talking about. Jesus is saying, if you'll fill up on my Father's perspective on life, if you'll fill up on my teaching, then you'll have my perspective on what life should look like in any given situation. And if you fill up on that, then you're one of my disciples. And if they have that perspective, then you'll begin to live in freedom. You'll, you'll understand the joy of the Lord, the presence of God, the wisdom of God in your life. So good. You know, the, the United States Air Force says that human beings forget 90% of what they hear in 72 hours. That is the most depressing statistic for a preacher in the world. <laughs> Wednesday, this is gone. You know? But here's the deal. That's why we have message notes. So that it's not just hearing. So you can write it down. So you can get your eyes involved and see it like this, right? Right? so that you can get your hand involved in writing a word. Get this, man. This is so worth writing down. The shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. It's true. Okay? The shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. You write something down, and it's going to be there on Wednesday. You write something down, and you can review it. You write something down and you can get together with friends and ask those three questions and talk about it and reinforce it and talk about how it applies to your life and what the Holy Spirit was saying to you as you read that and, and how are we going to do this? Pray for me. Let's get together next week and talk about it again. All that. And all of a sudden, it becomes not just something you heard and went away. It becomes something that takes up root in your heart and begins to transform you from the inside out. See that? And that all comes from you saying, I want it. I want it. And I'm hungry for it. So we, we, we go after that. And we apply that. We've all heard, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? It's true. That's why Jesus said, if... That's, that might be the most important word in that, that verse. If you do this. If you continue in my word. Then you'll learn what it means to be a disciple, someone who's being transformed into the likeness of Jesus as they follow Him. Then you'll discover what freedom really is in Christ because you'll have His perspective on life. Powerful. That's why Dr. Reese at Johnson, he said this all the time in our Old Testament classes. He had millions of cool little sayings. He'd say, repetition is the mother of memory. Repetition is the mother of memory. And he was just saying, look, I'm glad you guys came to class. That's awesome, but you're going to forget most of this by Wednesday. So write it down and look at it and look at it and share it and talk about it in the, in the cafeteria and hang out and, and digest it, right? Get it down inside. That's what, that's what it's about. 
So if you want God's point of view, His wisdom, if you want it to be in a place in your life where it's front and center, where it comes to your mind quickly when you face... Because, you know, you leave here and guess what you hit? Real life. And you get into a conversation and somebody cuts you off in traffic or you face a challenge in life that seems overwhelming and you don't know what to do. If you want in those circumstances to have God's Word front and center, His wisdom, His point of view on that matter. What do I do, God? How do I handle this? Then you need to continue in His Word. You need to stay there regularly. You need to, re- you need to tune up. You need to fill your heart with God's perspective. You need to get into His Word. You need to be with God's people and have people who will challenge you, not who will pull you down, but who are always pulling you up. I love you, and I'm going to be here for you. So, so important. You need to tune up regularly and get into that koinonia relationship with some people. So now I just want to read two scriptures and tie them together as we close, okay? To challenge us and kind of put a bow on this. Last week we looked at this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Paul says, To those whom God has called, to everyone who has heard the voice of God saying, Jesus is my son, he did die on the cross for you come and receive him and you've done that right Christ whether whether you're Jew or Greek i.e. it doesn't matter where you come from or where you've been but if you're in Christ Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God powerful so hold on to that then let's look at this next one both of these are written to Christians okay not to the general world but to people who've trusted Christ he wants you to get that. Christ is the power of, or in the wisdom of God. Then James chapter 1, verse 5. Such a great verse on wisdom. James says, if you need wisdom, can anyone join me in saying, uh-huh? That's all of us, right? If you need wisdom, look how simple this is. Ask. Our, and look how he describes God. Our generous God isn't up there going, now, I only got three left. First one, no, I don't know about you. You don't qualify. I'll give it to this one. That's not God. He's generous. He's pulling for you. Man, He is in your corner. He is dying for you to come to Him and ask. Our generous God. And look what He says. He will give it to you. Isn't that awesome? He will give it to you. Uh, And He will not rebuke you for asking. That blesses my heart. That means he won't say, you've been a Christian for 41 years and you don't have that figured out yet? You ever had someone say that? God's not like that, praise God. He'll say, praise the Lord, I don't care how long it took you, we got eternity, but you got there and now you're here. I'll give it to you generously. 